Hello and welcome. It's Tuesday, which means it's time for another tutorial. And last week, I kind of made a bit of a mess of the NFT to NFT transfers. So this week, I'm just going to try and kind of brute force my way through a platform I've never used to do something that I have done before, which is to mint an NFT. And today, we're going to be using Mintable to mint an NFT. And I've used CreateBase, I've used Cargo, I've used OpenSea, I've used Rarible, never used this one. And the reason I'm using this one is because this is the one that Mark Cuban uses. Now, it's a platform and a marketplace like any other. There's tons of digital art here. And what I guess is that the tools that you use to mint an item should be the same as any other. And therefore, I should be able to do exactly what I want to do in about 10 minutes. So let's give it a go. So when we arrive on Mintable, they say create it, mint it, earn crypto, turn any creation into a blockchain item. And that's kind of the promise of NFTs. You can turn anything into a thing that you can then charge people money for, sometimes lots of money. <clears throat> now I've already set up an account here, but if you wanna do that, it's very straightforward to do. They will send you a link that you then need to confirm your joining with. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it doesn't take that long to do. It's pretty instantaneous. Once you've done that, uh, we're gonna do connect a wallet and I've got my MetaMask wallet already set up as per usual. So I'm just gonna log into that. And now everything I wanna do should be possible. Now, here's the thing about minting NFTs. If you've heard the news that they will basically kill baby seals if you do them. That's not exactly what's going on here. Environmentally, they're no different than doing any other transaction on Ethereum, but you will need gas in order to pay for the minting process. We'll get into the different flavors of minting that you can do, but you will need some Ethereum in your wallet because Ethereum's how we pay for gas. So if you haven't got any, make sure you've got some. How much you're gonna need, I cannot tell you because on any given day, the gas price might be $200, it might be $10, it won't be $200. But certain actions on Ethereum can cost, you know, a ton of money. So just be aware that you might run into those costs. And if that's too much for you, then okay, cool. But if they're not too much for you, then we can go about minting an NFT. So here's what we're going to do. Up the top, we want to go to mint an item. Now it gives us an option. Uh, is the item live on the blockchain? Or is it a new item you want to make? We want to create a new item. Nice and easy, traditional or gasless. Now, that looks interesting, doesn't it? Traditional or gasless. I can actually mint without paying anything. But let's give that a go. If I click on advanced, well, then I get another option here, which is traditional, which means a transaction is needed, or gasless, no transaction needed. So effectively, what's going on here is you've got two options, one of which is you're gonna mint an NFT, which is gonna be immediately written to the blockchain in the way that it will be on any other platform. Or you can mint an NFT that lives entirely within the mintable platform and isn't actually turned into an NFT and registered on the blockchain until it's sold or transferred. So you own it, it exists, it has an identity, but it only, rep it only exists as a representation on the Mintable platform, which does basically mean that you can go ahead and mint items and only then pay for the gas once they're sold or you wanna transfer them to somebody. That's a neat little feature. So what we're gonna do in this instance is do a, a more traditional transaction because I wanna kinda go through all the different features that we might wanna have and then just have a, have a look at the costs as well. So we're gonna include all the features <clears throat> now you get a list of different things that you can do here and it might look a bit overwhelming, but trust me, it's not that bad. So the first thing it's gonna ask you is what kind of item are you making? Is it art, collectibles, game items, music, domains, templates, and videos? Now, I was trying to figure out what was the best thing for me to do for this tutorial, and I dug in the archives and came up with this beauty. Now this is a, an image of myself and Simon One, who you will have seen in many of the different videos that we've done. And this is us posing for a very famous photographer called Rankin for his magazine, Hunger. And it was us for like 10 years ago when we were doing stupid YouTube videos and dicking about, hey, you know what, what's changed? And I thought that would be a fun thing to do as an NFT for this tutorial. So what do we call that? Is it art? Is it a collectible? Is it a game? Let's call it a collectible. We're just going to click on that. Now, the next option we have is mint in the mintable store or not mint in the mintable store. Now, here's what's going on here. So 
when you issue an NFT, that NFT has to have a contract associated with it. And the contract, it's kind of like the difference between hosting your own web page with your own domain and using something like Facebook and having a Facebook page. And that's not quite what's going on here because that's a centralized example, but it helps you kind of understand the difference between the two. So with the, uh, if, you, if you basically want to mint in the Mintable store, which is the option here, your NFT will be placed under the collection of Mintable. And you'll find the same thing on OpenSea, you'll find the same thing on Rarible, same thing on Cargo. But let's say you are a fashion label and you want to issue a bunch of digital fashion items under your own brand, under your own label, then it would make sense for you to go to the cost of setting up your own contract with your own name that lives on the Ethereum blockchain. So that's why you might want to do that. The only thing is, it actually gets kind of expensive to do that. So for a lot of people, what they really want is just to be able to get their collectible made. So in this instance, we're going to mint in the Mintable store. And that'll give us the token address for Mintable. And that's the Mintable smart contract. Uh, I'm only want to mint my token. Yeah, that's pretty simple. If I deselect that, I will get a bunch of other things. But let's keep it simple. I only want to mint my token. I'm going to give it a, a token name. Supermassive Rankin, listing title, Rankin balls, listing subtitle, when we were less smelly. And then I can upload a private unlockable item file in there. Well, that's the fun thing about NFTs, that they, they are able to hold media. So you can do some kind of fun hidden file things. So let, let's say you, you've got like a, a, you know, an audio file that you only want a certain person to hear if they unlock it from your NFT. You can embed that, you can embed zip files, you can embed documents, anything really. I always find that that's kind of fun. Uh, it allows you to put something in there that only the owner of the NFT can gain access to. Um, in this instance, we're just gonna add that image, lovely image that it is. Funny enough, Rankin, when we did that shoot, I think he took about 10 photographs and the whole photo shoot was done in about 10 minutes. What a pro. Uh, he just had a bunch of people working for him. He just took the camera and then took the shot. That was it. That's what happens when you're super famous and you've got a big studio and lots of people working for you. Uh, that is pretty much it. Well, I don't really want to add any extra metadata and I can pretty much just list this item now. So, transaction alert, you're about to send one transaction brackets S to the blockchain, create your item on the blockchain. So this is the moment. I mean, it really is that simple. I have never used this platform before. I had an image that I wanted to mint. And now if I click proceed, what will happen is it will invoke the DAP or DAP. My MetaMask will ask me if I want to sign a transaction and then I can sign the transaction. And at that moment, I can review the gas and see whether the cost of this is something I want to entertain, or I can reject it. So let's go ahead. So as you can see, MetaMask opened up, and would you look at that? I made a prediction that it wouldn't be 20 bucks to mint this thing, but would you look at that? $89 to mint this NFT. Now, do I really want to spend $89 minting this NFT for this tutorial? Ah, oh, let's do it, let's do it. So congratulations, Rankin Bulls has been created successfully. It will automatically be added to your wallet once the transaction is confirmed. Check it out on your profile. So we can view our item and now we get to see, if I look at the MetaMask activity, I can look at this transaction on the blockchain. And if you didn't know, like anytime you sign a transaction on Ethereum, you can go to Etherscan and find out exactly what's happening to it. You can look in the pending transaction queue. You can see exactly what's happening in real time. Try doing that with your bank. Not possible. So I've done it. I've spent $89 to mint an image that nobody in their right mind would ever possibly want. But if you, dear viewer, actually do want this, then let me know and I will send it to you for free because no one should be paying for this. Well, that was pretty straightforward. I can understand why Mark Cuban likes it because that was, uh, that was a nice experience. And so later on... I don't know if it's going to be there yet. <clears throat> Later on, my NFTs should show up the new NFT when it turns up. Loading my tokens. 
Oh, there we go. So I have a bunch of tokens already in my wallet and it can see those, which means I can probably sell those as well. Don't you love permissionless? All my Somnium spaces. Ooh, I need to do more stuff in Somnium. Uh, but we have to wait, as always, for the transaction to confirm. And the problem with Ethereum at the moment is it's not just expensive, it's also kind of slow. But when you think about all the functionality, all the different things we can do, it's pretty cool. So stay tuned for the massive, and I do mean massive, documentary film all about NFTs that's coming later this week. We are still working super hard to try and get that finished off. We've spoken to some amazing people and got some amazing insights into this space. And this process of doing this is great, to be honest, but it would be a lot better if we didn't have to pay 90 bucks. Let's have a look. It looks like the transaction went through. Yeah, so somewhere I should have an NFT. Okay, success. I can now see in my profile the lovely ranking bulls. Thank you, Rankin, for taking a wonderful photo that I've now immortalized on the blockchain in your honor. So now I've got some information. There's a bunch of numbers that I don't understand, a bunch of code I don't understand, and I don't need to understand. But what I do understand is this thing belongs to me, which means that I can sell it and I can transfer it. So if I want to sell it, I have to give it a listing title. So we're just gonna call it Rankin Bulls, and the listing subtitle, when we were less smelly. And I can add a description. It's kind of like eBay, but like the really rubbish version of eBay when eBay just first started. There's actually an interesting thing here, which is transfer copyright when purchased, a little checkbox. So it says when a buyer purchases this item, they have the rights to use the file commercially. Although it actually says chimerically. Spell checker, anyone? And <clears throat> effectively what that means is, let's say you were a photographer and you sold a photograph. You could actually sell the photograph and then someone could use it commercially however they wanted. You give up all the rights to that. But obviously you could command a premium for that. But you can also not check that box, which means that if anyone does use the image commercially, then you have the right to go after them. Although whether you would is a different thing. Uh, but I believe that if we want to list this item, I'm just going to put a little uh, description in there. Uh, this is a tutorial joke. Please do not buy. And yes, allow buyer to resell. Fixed price in ETH, in US dollars. I'm gonna call it $1. And then I can list this item. Oh, I have to select a category. All right, it's a collectible, barely. You're about to send one traction. Oh, let's see, let's see how much this costs. It costs nothing. You just have to sign. So that's the wonderful thing about Mintable, to actually list an item doesn't cost much, but to mint the item, $89. Was it worth it? Oh gosh, you know it was, because the comments I'm gonna get, ah, worth every penny. And that's it, so we have listed the item, we have created the item, and honestly it took 10 minutes, and most of the time that it took was just waiting for Ethereum to do its thing. Now obviously you could pay more gas and then speed this through, but why would you? And then you can actually lower the gas and it happens slower. But yeah, that's it, minting an NFT, done.